Hey everyone, my name's Daisy and this is Daisy's Digital Diary. That's really hard to say really quickly. So in today's video we're going to be looking through my fashion photography portfolio for university. So I have applied to Leeds Art University, UAL for fashion photography and photography, Salford for fashion image making and styling and then also, um, that's it. No it's not. Oh, UCA Rochester for fashion photography. So far I've been accepted with unconditional offers to UAL Photography and UCA Rochester. I've also got a conditional offer from um, Salford. This is because um, I took my A-levels last year so I already have my results. So for my applications, they all went off at the same time. I sent them off on the 7th of January and then slowly but surely they all kind of requested to have a portfolio. Leeds Art University required three images, which are these ones here. So I just picked my favourite ones. They asked to see like a range of work so um, I decided to go with these three. And then the rest of them were pretty similar. They all requested around 30, um, 35 images. For UAL photography and fashion photography, they both asked for 30. And they do this on a program called Pebble Pad. And although I was applying for two courses at the same university, I still had to put in two separate portfolios. So considering that fashion photography is obviously a little bit more niche than photography, that is obviously tailored towards fashion photography and my photography portfolio is a little different it includes some of my artwork and some of my kind of more conceptual art photography so right now i'm just going to go over my salford portfolio because that's one i've got in front of me so they are pretty similar all of them um but there are a couple of changes in terms of the layout with the salford one so for my salford one they required 35 to 40 images and more if you had more, which was the highest amount of work that anybody had requested. Um, I think because it is a year without physical portfolios and a year without interviews as well, I feel like a lot of universities are wanting to see as much work as possible just so they can kind of get a gauge to the student without having to be able to meet them. For my Salford fashion image making and styling portfolio, it is A4. They required it to be all on one PDF. I did my magazine size because I wanted to be able to put all the text that I had written my previous portfolios in there so let's get started so this is the cover I'm just looking at it on my tablet down here so sorry if I keep looking down I've got my name I've got a self-portrait series which comes later in my portfolio and then I've also got the title on there and also my username for my portfolio just in case I wanted to see that I think it's a great idea to have your social media or a website or anything like that linked they do suggest that quite often to have some sort of link to your socials and for me, I just wanted to make sure that if they wanted to see it, it was all there. So before I sent them off, I made sure to update my Instagram with a lot of backdated um, photography as well, just to see if just if they wanted to see more work that they could. And then I've got a contents page. I didn't have this for any of my other applications. I don't know if other people did this either. Um, I think with portfolios, you know, you do you, and um, you can't really copy somebody else's portfolio or the style. Just kind of go with what you think is best. I put a contents page in there because they said they wanted it to be logical and easy to follow. So on this first page here, this is Eden, and this is a photo shoot that I did back in March 2020. So on the 1st of March of this photo shoot, so just before lockdown. So this photo was part of my two year long art project um, inside the Dream Lab. And here the four, four subjects are sitting around in the simulation of the dream. So I really like this because I actually did the styling in all these photo shoots and I really enjoyed putting together the outfits and kind of making everyone fit together with the checked clothing and the blue as well. I tried to have it like a little preppy kind of um, vibe with the outfits. And the next page um, we have got a landscape photo. So I think that's one thing that's difficult with any sort of portfolio is finding the right size and the right layout for everything because some images are going to be able to fill up a whole page, other ones are going to be landscape. So I think if you've got a lot of portrait photographs, you might want to do an A4 portfolio or if you've got a lot of landscape then maybe you should go with like kind of a, well a landscape um, portfolio. That being said, my first portfolio for UAL, I used um, a PowerPoint sized image because I felt that that fitted well with the layout on Pebble Pad. I will talk through my UAL portfolio in a little bit but the content is all the same it's just a different layout so I'll show that later. With every photo shoot um, I prepared a little note section a kind of a description um, of the things I thought was important to say about the photograph. UAL requested they didn't want a lot of writing so a lot of mine were kind of just one paragraph a couple of paragraphs saying about the image and about the specific con concept and then another thing which is really important to keep in mind for your portfolio is they're going to want to see development and I think with photography this is quite difficult um, I'm not sure about anybody who's watching but personally I will 
can come up with a photo shoot idea in my head, I might make a couple of notes and I'll save a couple of things on Pinterest. But I don't do incredible amounts of research. It might be different if you come from a photography A-level background or whatever background you come from, but personally I didn't do a lot of research before photo shoots. Um, which made it quite difficult to make my portfolio because all of a sudden I needed to prove all my thinking. So for a lot of my photo shoots I had to actually go back and kind of move board some of my ideas even though I'd already done the photo shoots because I needed to kind of show the process that I'd gone through to get to the final image. So on this page um, is my mind map kind of showing my thought process behind this whole photo shoot. Um, I just kind of put some inspiration images on there, I made sure to reference some fashion um, inspiration as well considering the fact that this was applying to fashion photography. And as well as that I also put on the this corner here um, I put some other images that I have taken and like developed my idea further. So they said they like to see development of an idea um, and I couldn't put more images on any more slides because I ran out of room so I decided let's print them out and let's put them on my map instead. So this page here is another one of my art pieces. If anybody has watched my last video about my sketchbooks then you will have already seen these photo shoots. So on this page is Five Elements Water. So I put these after Eden just because I feel like the flow was it flowed quite well from one another because they are technically on the same topic of dreams. So on this page I put a little bit of digital drawing up in the corner and obviously I don't have this for every um, piece but I just thought it made the page look a little bit more interesting. Five Elements Metal. So this is another one of the photo shoots from my art A-level and then on the next page after that um, I did the little description saying what the image is about. If anyone is interested in reading them pause, read, but yeah, I can just talk about my inspirations. Under that I just did my little mind map. So as well as my art sketchbooks, I also have a an inspiration sketchbook which I've been using through lockdown just trying to keep myself interested. And then next is retro mood. So in these photos I decided to kind of take a sustainable approach on the retro themes and the retro trends that are coming on the catwalk. And this gave me a lot to talk about actually in the next page if you can see there's a quite a big paragraph under that. I feel like that kind of shows that I am up to date with the latest trends, you know, not only is it talking about the trending retro themes, but it's also talking about um, the idea of sustainability in slow fashion, which is a really important thing as we move forward in the, in the industry. And also, I think it's important to note, but if you look on your, where you're applying to websites and things, they will say what they research in, and UAL researches a lot in sustainable fashion. So I thought it was kind of important to put this in there, just to kind of say, look, I know what you research and I research it too. So I'll be a great fit for your university. And after that is this image here. So this is a VIP of youth. Sometimes I find it's quite difficult to title all of your pieces. Um, some people will title it as the um, model or some people will title it on the colour scheme, I guess. I just title it with whatever sounds fine. I think you can get pretentious with it if you want to. Um, VIP of youth sounds a bit funny. This photo shoot itself was inspired by NCT Dream's song Boom. So I didn't necessarily put that in my sketchbook because I, I don't always want to say oh this was inspired by a K-pop group, this was inspired by another K-pop group because although that's true um, I kind of wanted to seem like I had a little bit more variation in my influences. So for this one what I said this photo shoot was inspired by was in contrast to much of the representation of teens seen in the media I decided to create a shoot which combines the somewhat unlikely aesthetics between youth and elegance. So I used the um, grandeur of the location to match with the flowing clothes and the kind of elegant styling that I'd chosen to do. So on the next page is another one of my mind maps. This one is a digital mind map. I thought it'd be interesting to kind of show both physical and digital versions of my kind of thought process. And this one here shows an original inspiration images, uh, outfit inspiration images, um, location, colour palette and also some behind the scenes images. So this was one of my photo shoots where I had somebody on hand to help out. So they managed to get some behind the scenes photographs of me styling and doing the makeup, which I thought was interesting to put in because it says, look, here I am actually doing the thing that I'm claiming to be able to do. Sorry about my chair. It's making funny noises throughout this video. It's really annoying. And then we kind of reach the next section of my portfolio. So this here is my EPQ. As you can see, it's quite contrasting to my last image. Um, it's got a lot of bright colours, um, but I really like the composition of this, this one. The, the line that she creates up the photo and the kind of interesting framing of it. My EPQ was titled, What Does a Successful Off-White Advert Include? And so for this, I did research on their brand image, kind of other fashion photography adverts that I could be inspired by. I also did some primary research um, asking people what they thought about these adverts, asked people about colour schemes, things like that. And I used all this research to create my three photo shoots which I then sent in as my EPQ product. If anybody needs some more information on EPQ I can give that as well. Um, I found EPQ incredibly difficult. Um, I don't think any of us knew what was going on. I got a B for my EPQ. Um, it was originally an A but it got marked down um, but I'm still really happy with that because the images I got out of it were 
some of my favourite. So my photo shoots were inspired by this piece of clothing here which says global warming question mark and from that the first two photo shoots were one was fire and then one was freeze. So here is freeze. I think one thing that I found really difficult is finding locations to shoot at. Um, you've always got to be like looking around trying to find photo shoots and this was um, on a bridge um, freezing so true to the name because everyone else was wearing coats, hats, scarves, I think it was in January or something like that. Um, this is definitely one of my most memorable photo shoots and people were coming past being like what the hell is going on. So here I really like the composition of this image. So I read this book here by Henry Carroll. Read this if you want to take great photographs. So it goes through everything like composition, it also talks about your different camera settings. But one thing I found very interesting was this page, look for leading lines. It just talks about making composition in your image with with the use of architecture and i think that always is something that leads my work um but in this one especially because if you notice the like the bridge that are going all going towards the model and like honing in on her and i really enjoyed like that composition and then this is the third image warning so this is quite similar to the first image in terms of the posing but i really like this one i enjoyed how i styled the jumper she was like half taking off i was like wait there hold it and um this is the image we took so as well as photographs the universities often ask for some sort of written evidence some essays which i think is a bit strange considering the fact that people i don't know doing history or english don't have to send in any essay but we do but hey ho i decided to send in my epq product essay with this so in this essay i just talk through my research and how that affected my photographs I think knowing what to put in as your essay is very difficult when it comes to fashion photography because it's like well I've never done fashion photography as a class before so how am I meant to have written an essay on it um, but I was quite fortunate in the fact that I chose that as my EPQ um, so if any of you are choosing an EPQ and want to do fashion photography I would suggest doing something about fashion photography so you have somewhere you can use it later and then here is proportional so in this um, photo shoot I just kind of tried to make strong silhouettes with the cinching of the blazer at the waist and I think it, I really like the effect it creates it's quite strong and poignant yet it's quite a simple photo at the same time and here's another photo of that shoot and um, this photo here didn't actually make the cut for some of my other portfolios but because Salford wanted more images I left this one in and then this is some of my more recent work here this is Jang in this photo shoot I was inspired by the Korean photographer Jang Dukwa, if you're interested, this is their Instagram. Um, I absolutely love a lot of their work. And they do a lot of layering, they do they create a lot of texture within their work, which is something I've never really done before. So I decided in my research and reflection journal that I would take some photographs and kind of play around with them with the layout, with the layering, and what I did for this was I used um scotch tape to stick them all down because that's something they did in their work. And I also used um nail polish remover to get rid of the um like some of the ink on the paper. So then this image here is the one we saw on the cover. This is probably my, one of my most recent um, photo shoots, even though it was back in November. I just turned 19 at this point and I decided I wanted to do an identity photo shoot. Kind of everything that I love, all my favourite aesthetics in rolled up into one. And I realised a lot of my favourite aesthetics are kind of retro childhood, like kid core kind of vibes. And so I decided to do a photo shoot inspired by that. The photo shoot itself was named Neo Nostalgia, and this was a phrase coined by Dazed Magazine where they talked about the influence of nostalgia on the catwalk. If anybody's interested, I will link the article below. So again, I need to show my influences and my inspiration, and this was another scan from my research and reflection journal. I like to collage some of my favourite photo shoots on there, like a bit like a visual Pinterest board, and this was one of those pages. And on this page is another exploration into the scrapbooking kind of trend. So on this page I decided to collate some of the places where scrapbooking has been used recently. And from that I decided to create a little photo shoot which was similar to Neo Nostalgia but a little bit more um, colourful and bright. And then on the next page is another scan from my sketchbook. And this one was showing the inspirations behind the um, noir photo shoot, which I did first in May of 2018 and then I redid in 2020. In her music video noir, which I would highly recommend watching, it's very interesting, she explores the kind of negative effect of social media on the protagonist, who increasingly does more risky things to get likes on social media. And then I did, I did a photo shoot inspired by this in 2018, with the kind of emojis and the little hearts on the face. This was only scratching the surface of the addiction photo shoot. I didn't really include any sort of negative effects of social media, except from her looking a little bit bored. And then in 2020, I decided to upgrade this and do a little bit more wacky styling because you know this girl she wants all the attention so she's gonna dress in bright colours and then I also kind of made it a little bit more risky um 
So a little trigger warning, there is going to be a knife in the next couple of images. So in the first one, new lifestyle, she is sat in her room, which is my room here, um, and she's got a pink background up and the idea is that she takes photos in front of this pink background, this is all the world can see, but she's, she's really alone. She sits there creating content, but she's really alone. And then in Blink of Vision, this was inspired by a pose that Sunmi did in Noir, where she did this and her hand said new post. Um, this was inspired by Pan's Labyrinth, the pale man who is blind until he puts eyeballs into his hands and then they can see. Um, the idea in some of music video was that when she did this, all she could see was the new post. I decided to change that idea because I didn't want to um, copy it completely and write new post on my hands but then have blink and vision. So that this is all she can see, she can only see the new content. Bad ending, this is my final image and I kind of liked how it's called bad ending. I think it's a little bit risky because people could look at it and go well she's called it a bad ending herself so it must be bad but at the same time I think it's kind of um, fun because it's like well this is a bad ending but I actually think it's a pretty good ending you know like reverse psychology hopefully fingers crossed that's what they think and in this image the influence of social media has gotten too much and she is kind of leading the same lifestyle that Sunmi in her music video was leading um, she's taking new risks to create sort of content she's not really conscious and she's not really weighing up the mistakes that she's making and I think this is true to a lot of people. A lot of people on the internet aren't thinking about the risks that they're posing to themselves or other people with the content they make because too often social media rewards people doing shocking things. I really wanted to kind of focus on that in this final image. So that was my Salford image making and styling portfolio. For my UAL portfolio my images were the same but they looked like this. On Pebblepad there was a space underneath for the description so instead of putting it on pages like I did for Salford the descriptions just went in the box underneath. And then for my UAL photography portfolio. I also included these images here from my art editor. These images aren't particularly fashion photography based so I decided to cut them out of my fashion photography portfolio but I enjoyed put, leaving them in my photography portfolio because I feel like it shows another creative side to me which you might not necessarily see in fashion photography. Um, so that's it for my portfolio video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's very long so thanks for sticking with me. If anybody has any questions you can leave them below. So just to reiterate I have gotten into um, UAL photography and UCA Rochester fashion photography. I will update the description or I'll put a little star up here if I have any responses before I post this video. Um, but fingers crossed the other universities like it as well and hopefully this video helped you. Um, if you're creating your portfolio or if you're just interested to see what I made. I think with portfolios you've got to go with what you think is right. You know it's your work, you're trying to show the best of who you are. It is unfortunate that I, I had to apply this year because a lot of the work was quite old but it shows you don't have to create a load of new content and completely brand new images to put in your portfolio. You can use work from your ALs, you can use it from GCSE time, some of that I took in 2018 which is over two years ago now um, and it still went in there. I hope this helps any of you who are creating your own portfolio. I um, hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you again in another video.